Good evening, um, or afternoon, or whatever. I stumbled across this neat little box a few weeks ago, and as you see, I've already started taking it apart. Uh, this is a MIDI base by 360 Systems. It's a pretty neat little thing. It's, okay, and I'll show you the inside. It's got four banks. Let me turn the flash on. It's got four banks of ROM. And, uh, you know, much like a drum machine, it has samples. Uh, but unlike a drum machine, or, you know, um, like unlike most synthesizer kind of things that we see nowadays, it's a ROM player. So it just has the bass samples. Um, and obviously you could record anything you want and burn one nowadays, but back then this is what you had. Um, it's got a snappy thumb and pop, pick RW jazz, stand up. I mean, they all sound kind of crappy. Uh, what's interesting to me is this RAM chip here, which is where all of the modifications I'm going to do come from. This is a pitch control knob, uh, fine tuned for the upper pitch control knob. And this is the filter, the output filter, anti-aliasing filter, uh, which is configurable. I'm going to replace it, and I'm going to change the value of the capacitor um, that it's connected to to change the uh, change the filter characteristics. Um, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this transformer because it's just feeding two 5-volt regulators. I think it's actually a 5 and a 12. Um, and by bringing the transformer off board, I'll get rid of some of the noise, hopefully. Um, and I'll show you the other side and play some of the sounds. Oh, let me turn the flash off. So this is the, the upper side of the board. Uh, here are the four bass sounds that it can make. You'll notice this, uh, this switch was broken, and all I had was this momentary switch as a temporary replacement, which, as you see, works. It's a little loud. Um, and then this is the switch that should control all the MIDI functions, but it really doesn't. Um, it needs to be replaced. Uh, this controls pitch. And uh, yeah, so this controls what MIDI channel it takes. Um, for some reason, it's only responding on Omni mode right now. Again, I'm going to fix all that stuff before I put it back together. Um, this is also related to configuring it for MIDI keyboards. So here, yeah, this is what it sounds like. That's the slap bass one. I'm going to change, change it over to a different bass. All right, as you hear, it's kind of... You know, kind of a meh 80s bass. Uh, I did start to find a few cool little sounds coming out of it. Um, what I did was I looked up the data sheet for, for this RAM and I'm just adding connections based on the address and data buses. I don't want to mess around with too much else. Uh, because the RAM also does control some of the MIDI functions, so I'm going to be very careful with uh, what, what I mess around with. Some of them crash, as you see. Um, it's easy to reset. Um, so I have to be a little bit careful with the... Probably not coming through the speaker very well, through the shitty mic very well, but... Um, it has this really delightfully tinny sound. But unfortunately, connecting two of them together crashes it. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is have this row be on a selector switch, and then this row be on up-down points, because they can connect to each other, no problem. But if the, any of the address points, uh, actually I can't remember if this is the additive data, doesn't matter. 
if any of those two points touch, crashes the whole thing. So this row will be open, and then this row will probably have a selector switch, or I'll just to choose two on a, on a switch that I like. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the extent of, of the 360 Systems MIDI bass. And you see, MIDI doesn't turn off when you change the channel, um, which means there's some sort of programming mode, but this was released in 1985, and it spawned a much, much, much more successful sister product, the MIDI, Brit, MIDI Bass Pro, and all the documentation I could find online was about that. So... Thanks for watching.